uh, to know which memory regions we need to dump, we just use the memory protection unit. Inside the, this unit, there are a lot of there are registers that define the valid memory uh, memory regions, and we only need two regions: the my memory and the ROM. Uh, to control the execution of the emulator, we used uh, the integrate GDB server, uh, and also the integration of GDB with Python. Did, this way, we could write a Python script and control the execution from it. This Python script can set breakpoints, modify, modify the registers, and control as all aspects of the emulator. Well, uh, we need uh, to make some changes to the to the original firmware because we couldn't allow uh, it to call the operating system because it it wouldn't work. It would try to access some hardware registers that were not weren't emulated. Uh, so we uh, changed it the read function so we could. Uh, fit the emulator or script, and we did it in a way that it read one character at the time. And this way, when the interpreter found an error as it was parsing the script, uh, we could uh, find exactly at which point uh, the the error was found. Well, this is the general way that we found out about the syntax. We tried a script and find out the, the location of the error, and then we change it until no error was found. These are three scripts. The last one is valid, syntactically, syntactically valid, but it doesn't do anything. This second slide shows that if you try to to call a script a function, uh, well, sorry, uh, outside the, the body of another function, that's an error. You can only call function from the body of other function. So we, this way, we we realized that there was there must be one function that that's the entry point. I'm going to show you now the emulator as it's running. The emulator is already running. I'm just going to run the Python script. You can see here in blue uh, the script that is about to be fit. The, the emulator read all the script one character at a time and find, found out exactly where the error is found. In this case, var is, isn't defined. In this second demo, I'm going to show a valid script that has sent the entry point. So we arrived to a breakpoint that doesn't lead to code execution. This way, we later found about the entry point. This is the third demo that with the initialize function, that's the entry point. This script is totally valid. And we arrive to a breakpoint that that shows that code is about to be executed. This is a complete valid script that prints "Hello World" to the screen, camera screen. You can see that there are a lot of predefined functions inside the camera. Uh, Alfredo is going to talk about about. It. Okay, uh, at this time we have uh, the grammatical structure of the language, we have the tokens, but we, the language also have a lot of functions that we can call. In fact, this is wrong. There are 5,000 functions, sorry, 500, inside a uh, common Canon camera governing everything from the sensors, um, um, uh, mo little motors, um, accelerometers, CCD, Absolutely everything you can access from this language. And in fact, you can access the main memory of the kernel using poke and pick 
instructions because it's basic, like Commodore 64 basic. Uh, we we uh, started to build a, a, a document and a, a user guide of this language. Is here we are gonna put it online uh, after after this. Uh, we are documenting all the functions. Uh, we don't have all, of course, because there are 500, but we have some of them. Uh, there are very interesting things about this language. Uh, for example, there are functions you read about the kernel process memory here. You can see uh, this is the equivalent of the top Unix command inside a camera. So how many process you think a camera can have? Well, it can have hundreds of pro uh, sorry, about 70, 70 process, uh, processes inside a Canon camera. All these processes governing from the buttons to the display, from the, for keeping the CCD warm, they are, uh, it's a very complete operative system inside this, this camera. I'm gonna publish this document in short, so everybody can start building scripts. Uh, so okay, well we can do it with this language. Well, uh, because uh, it's difficult to do something with a camera, but some you, you can do uh, some stuff like we're gonna show now. For example, you can, uh, the old school that we showed at the beginning. Uh, okay, here is, I'm gonna show. This is the little school that we show at the beginning. This is not new. Uh, but this is, we're gonna uh, show this script in a lot of cameras and it should we work because it's basic, it's not uh, accessing any low level uh, system. Okay, you have, this is a, a cheaper camera, this is a 470 Canon, the, uh, the first one was a G10, one of the high-end cameras, but the script works perfectly. You wanna test in your camera, Oren? Well, it will work in, in, ev in every power shot camera. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it works. Show it, okay. Well, it worked perfectly. We don't have any special code to choose between cameras. It's the same code, it works in every camera. Okay, so what else we can do with this script? Well, of course, we can, uh, we can uh, make uh, pictures appear. We can put fake pictures in the camera, for example. Just a minute, please. Uh, I'm gonna show a demonstration about, well, you can't put any kind of image inside the camera, for example. Uh, we're gonna erase every picture inside this memory card. Okay, it's ready. So, we're gonna show that there is no picture in there. It's like a magic trick. There's no picture there, so we're gonna launch the exploit. Okay, launch it. There it is, exploit deploy. And then we will turn on the camera again. We know there is a picture of uh, General Perón there. Of course, this picture didn't exist before. But we put it there, or exploit just made a picture appear. So this is, uh, not so dangerous uh, until you start putting pictures of illegal things in the cameras and then you have to explain to police uh, that your camera has a virus. But we have a, a, a more serious exploit here. It's about, maybe you have heard. This, is, this exploit is very new. It's, uh, it's the link exploit that was uh, made public just a week, weeks ago. I have a SD without 
the the files that uh, that ex exploit this bug, but there is a script for the camera that will launch this exploit. Okay, let's try. We don't have space for for the USBs here. First, we're gonna show the memory card. Nothing happened here, but this is the script. You can see it here. This is the script that launched the link exploit. It just creates a lot of of links inside the the memory card. Uh, it doesn't have eject, so we're gonna eject it anyway. We're gonna run text exploit in any camera. In fact, can be anyone. We're gonna launch this one. This one, the cheapest. Let's see if this works, because if it doesn't work, we have a video, so we can believe it. Sorry. Uh, there is. You say export ready, and then you just remote the memory card. You see, it is work because we never tested this really. Uh, and whoops. Ah, oh, well, execution. Well, uh, this is the famous link exploit that you, when you execute, uh, uh, when you see a, um, a memory card, uh, it just uh, for a for a. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. This this wasn't supposed to be this way because we forgot to to reset the explorer process. Uh, the problem with this is that uh, once we showed the empty memory card. Uh, the shortcuts were still there, uh, so I'm going to show it uh, after resetting the explorer process. Okay, we got a video that we're gonna upload that it works. Well, in fact, kind of work it, but not like we we wanted to do. This is a real exploit that we, we basically we are just copying a file in the in the memory card, and when you s just saw the file, it will execute code like this one, like this showing there here. Of course, you can execute any kind of code. And well, that's countermeasures. It's about countermeasures. Uh, we had. You have to be ready uh, to be sure that there are no files with these extensions, uh, as these are necessary to uh, launch CH CHDK or the script. So, if there are not eight of these uh, files in your memory card, you are safe from this. Um, Canon cameras use picture transfer protocol. Uh, and that means uh, the c when the computer is connected to the camera through the USB cable, uh, it, the computer ca ha can't read the root de directory of the memory card. So the good news is that you can get infected through the USB cable, but the bad thing is that no antivirus can scan the whole memory card when it's connected by the USB cable to the camera. Well, so that's all. We have a language that we found inside every PowerShot camera. Uh, we documented it. We're going to put it online. So if you have a, a digital camera, now you have a, a general purpose computer that you can use to program in basic. It will run in every power. No, not, I don't know. It's everyone, but every PowerShot camera that we test. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>